Here's a list of the elements of art. Line, shape, color, texture, value, space, and form. Our project is going to be using all of these elements of art. The learning goals for this lesson are I can draw from my imagination and from observation. I can use various media in my drawing to achieve different effects. Media is the art materials like markers, crayons, paint, or chalk. The scene you will be drawing today involves a fishbowl and an animal or human looking down at the fish. Here are some examples of an animal you might choose, but you also can do something different from your imagination. If you select one of these animals, you may want to come back to the page that has the animal you like and pause it while you try to draw the same animal on your paper, sitting on top of the fishbowl or standing behind it. You can either draw all of your scene on one piece of paper or cut out the animal and glue it on top of the fishbowl like this first grade student did very successfully. If you drew your whole scene on one piece of paper with pencil and then outlined in black marker, yours will turn out like one of these. They only used crayons and marker, no paint, and they drew everything on one piece of paper. This student did something a little bit different. They cut out the fishbowl and the table and the animal from different papers and glue them all onto that lavender paper. They put it together like a puzzle. Sometimes this is a better idea because if you make a mistake on your animal, you don't need to start the entire thing over. You would just do the animal over. Plus, they're using colored background paper, so they don't need to color in the whole background with crayon or marker. It saves a lot of time and it looks really sharp. Today will be part one of this project and we're going to work on the fish bowl first with the fish and the water inside. Next week, we'll do the animal. First, you might wanna look around the house for something that's round that's going to be about the size of a fish bowl and put it at the bottom of your page in case you decide to draw the animal above it on the same paper. I'm tracing my bowl just to make a light circle but I'm gonna make some changes to it. Here I'm gonna darken in the sides and make a little foot at the bottom of my circle to be the foot of a fishbowl so it won't roll around on the table. And then near the top, I'm going to make a lip to the fishbowl. It goes up and over and back down again. It's rather flat on the top. I think I'll take out my eraser and erase the circle that I still have under there. And I notice it's not exactly balanced on both sides. So I'm going to go ahead and fix up the left side and make it a little more like the right side. That's why we do everything in pencil first. So you can make those changes now before it's too late. Okay, I'm happy with that. I'm going to leave the top half of my paper available for an animal or a person. This is called an ellipse. I'm creating a round opening at the top of the fishbowl by using a shape similar to an oval and it makes it look like there's an opening there. Now I'm making some bumpy lines for the gravel or the small stones that will be at the bottom of the fishbowl. Another ellipse, or very skinny oval, will represent the top of the water. The water does not go all the way to the very tippy top of a fishbowl, or the fish could jump out. To create a fish, I begin with an oval, and then I add some lips to it. At the other side, I'll create a tail, a nice, big, large fish tail. The top and bottom have fins. Make up any shape you like for the fin. I'm making a fin on the side, in an eye, in a curved line for the face. Now for the texture. Scales create a scaly texture on the fish's body and lines will create a texture for the fins and tail. Put whatever you like in the fish bowl with the fish, like a little sea plant, or a small castle, 
or another fish. I added some bubbles and now I'm ready to outline my entire drawing in black permanent marker. If you don't have permanent marker, you can use a regular black marker, but you won't be able to use watercolor paint. I'm going to paint in my water, so it's important that I use permanent marker so I don't ruin the black marker when it gets wet. If you're not planning on painting anything, use whatever marker you have available. Because I know my water will be blue, I'm not going to use any blue for the fish. I think I'll use these colors. So I'm going to use some marker and color in some patterns and designs on my fish's tail and for the scales using purples and reds. And then I think I'll use a yellow also to add some bright color to my fish. Here in the sea plant, I'm going to do a combination of crayon green and marker green. So I have variety, a little bit of difference. It makes it more interesting than using the same green crayon or the same green marker for the whole plant. Now the gravel is made up of tiny stones and sometimes they're very colorful in a fishbowl. So I'm going to use a combination of different colored markers and I'm going to start by putting little dots down to try to make a texture of gravel, a texture of small stones, but brightly colored small stones. Now we're ready for the water. You can do your water with crayon and press very lightly, or you can do it with watercolor paint, but I would not use marker. Marker comes out very dark and kind of scribble looking. So watercolor paint is nice as long as you used permanent black marker when you did your drawing and it won't ruin the black. So I'm filling in my little ellipse where the top of the water would be, and I'm trying to mix a combination of blue and green to give it an aqua color. I like how light it's looking now. The water is not really a dark blue, but sometimes with paint it tends to get too dark. I'm trying to keep mine nice and watery and nice and light. Uh-oh. I just made it a little darker than I want it to be, so I'm going to try to rub that area out. But look, it's not coming out. You can add water to it. It's not really coming off. So I may have to add a little more blue to my water just so that one spot doesn't look like a big mistake. So try to keep yours nice and light if you can avoid getting too dark with the blue. Oops, I did it again. It's not easy. You can always make it darker, but it's very, very hard to make it lighter. I'm having that problem now, so I'm just adding more blue so it doesn't look like a mistake. But I'm not really happy with my blue water. If I did it again, I would try to keep it a lighter blue than that. This is a perfect stopping place for part one. So come back next week and we'll work on the animal or human that's looking into the fishbowl. Welcome back to part two, where we will add an animal or a human looking into the fishbowl. If you would like, you can draw your animal directly on the white paper where you have the fishbowl. Don't make any mistakes because you really don't want to have to start this all over. Option two is to cut out the fishbowl and to draw the animal on another piece of paper and cut it out also. And then you'll be gluing both of those onto a colored piece of paper. So this is really only good for you if you've got other papers at home that you can use. Let's start with option one. I'm about to draw a cat looking into my fishbowl and I'm beginning with the nose and the cheeks. If you're going to do a cat, you may want to stop and pause and follow along with the step-by-step -step demonstration. If you're going to do one of the other animals I showed earlier, you may want to go back to that page in the video, pause it, and try to draw the animal that you're looking at. I also will demonstrate drawing a dog in just a few minutes. Notice I'm making a nice large head. A cat is much bigger than a fish, so I don't want to make it too small. Some of this cat's body is going to be hidden behind the bowl. 
He's got nice big eyes, and he's going to be looking down at the fish. Now I'm thinking about his paws. I want to make his paws resting on the edge of the fishbowl, like he's about to stick one in there. And there's part of his body. Kind of a big, large body with a big, thick cat's tail. And then his legs are hidden behind the bowl. I'll add some stripes on the cat's body and tail. You can color yours in any way you like. Here's the line to represent the table. So the cat's probably standing on the table and the bowl is on the table. And now I think I will outline my entire cat in permanent black marker. The next step is to color in the cat using crayon or marker or chalk or oil pastels. And do it in whatever color you like. I think I'll be a little creative here and make my stripes pink. You don't normally see that in a cat. And I'm going to fill in my table with marker. It is not easy filling in large areas with marker. So I'm going to suggest that when you color in that big wall in the background, you don't use marker, but you use crayon. And here's a little trick. I break off a small piece of crayon and take the paper off of it and I hold it sideways, a nice thick way, and I just rub gently on the white background with the side of my peeled crayon, and it makes a nice even color. It doesn't have a scribbly look to it, and it goes very quickly. And that's a much faster way of doing it than using marker, and it's nice and easy to do. I just realized the fishbowl is white at the top and really it's glass so I should be able to see through there and see some of the cats coloring behind the black lines. The last thing I want to do is put a little more color into the eyes of this cat and I think I'll also color in the tongue. He's very hungry looking at that fish. There. So if you just drew everything on one piece of paper like I just did you're finished and you should share your picture with me. But if you would like to try this option too, where you cut all the different pieces apart and glue them onto a colored paper, follow along. This time I'm demonstrating how to draw a dog. So maybe you'd like that on your fishbowl instead of the cat. Remember to pause your video whenever you need to. I don't wanna to go too fast for anybody. So you just pause and catch up and then continue playing the video when you're ready. You may notice I always start with the nose and the cheeks and the chin and work my way out. Now we're doing the top of the head and the eyes. And then my favorite part are the ears. We start right about here and draw a long floppy large air that covers the side of the face. The hard part is making the one on the other side look similar. They don't need to be exactly the same. And now a neck. And then think about the fact that the bowl is going to be in front of your dog. So you might want to have his paws perched on top of the glass bowl. And then you wouldn't see much of his body. So we're just going to draw a line that continues behind the paws. And I'll cut this out later and make it look like those paws are in the bowl. This time I'm going to use crayon to color in the nose. And you'll notice I like to leave a little white highlight a place that's not colored in to look like the shine on the nose. And you can do that to the eyes too. Choose one side of your eye to leave a thin white line, an uncolored section to be the shiny highlight on the wet eyes. It's important that they are kind of similar though, so try to make both eyes the same. Now I'll trace over some of these lines with crayon. You don't always have to use marker to do your tracing. You can use crayon too. 
and some small dots on the dog's cheeks for his whiskers. And if you want to, you can come back later and put a tongue in that mouth. Now I'm using a brown marker to outline the ears. I think I'm going to use three different browns for my ears. I'll start with the dark brown marker at the top of the ears, and then I'll move to crayon brown in the middle of the ears, and then maybe a different shade of brown for the bottom of the ears. Now I'm going to outline some more and add a green collar for my dog and use a brown crayon for the face but I'm going to press nice and lightly so that the brown is a light tan value. I'll leave the middle of the face white. With option two, remember you're going to cut out the animal. Now choose a colored paper for your background wall and find another color that can become the table. Cut out your fish bowl and glue it onto the table. Cut out your animal and glue it above the fish bowl so that it looks like it's touching or interacting with the bowl. Remember, you have two choices. You can cut everything out and glue it together like this dog picture, or you can just draw everything on one piece of paper with no cutting and gluing like this cat picture. You choose but send me a photo of your finished work. I can't wait to see yours. <laughs>